Good afternoon. The Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women's Clubs is pleased to present another installment of our commemorative video series honoring the 19th Amendment centennial anniversary. Our informative and inspirational series is entitled My Centennial Crush, My Suffragist Shiro. Throughout the month of August, we have recognized and honored the women whose blood, sweat, and tears secured the right to vote for women. We have also recognized the many women who have continued to move women forward in our quest towards full equality. Our program today will highlight the centennial crush of another very important Oklahoma Democratic woman, Congresswoman Kendra Horn, who was elected in 2018 to represent the residents of Oklahoma Congressional District 5 in the United States House of Representatives. CD5 includes Oklahoma County and the counties of Seminole and Potawatomi. Originally from Chickasha, Kendra is a fifth generation Oklahoman and a fourth generation Girl Scout. She attended Oklahoma schools all the way through college when she attended the University of Tulsa. She studied law at SMU's Deadman School of Law in Dallas. Congresswoman Horn practiced as an attorney until she accepted a role as the press secretary to United States Congressman Brad Carson. After her time on the Hill, she worked in the space and aeronautics industry. She managed government affairs for the nonprofit Space Foundation before taking over its communication and media relations division. Space Foundation advocates for the global space community advancing civic, commercial, and national security space issues. Fortunately for us, Kendra returned to Oklahoma and became the executive director of Sally's List, a nonpartisan nonprofit that trains and supports women who run for political office at the state and local level. Most recently, she founded Women's Lead Oklahoma, a nonpartisan nonprofit that encourages women to participate in civic life. Additionally, this Girl Scout Gold Award winner served on the Oklahoma Commission on the Status of Women Advisory Council and has helped develop the next generation of leaders by working with the University of Oklahoma's new leadership program and the American Legion's Oklahoma Girl State. Congresswoman Horn has proven to be a tireless champion for women, girls, and families. Without a doubt, she is a friend and advocate of the Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women's Clubs, and we sincerely appreciate her support. I am reminded often of a well-known Dr. King quote when I see on television or social media that Congresswoman Horn is speaking over here and then leading a discussion over there, or that she has scheduled another series of town hall meetings to ensure that she is accessible to her constituents. Dr. King said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace a soul generated by love. Beautiful. Hey everybody, it's Congresswoman Kendra Horn. Uh, it's good to be here with you virtually. Uh, I wish that we could be together in person, but thankfully we have technology today that allows us to connect uh, even when uh, the challenges of a global pandemic is keeping us apart physically. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be joining the Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women uh, with the Centennial Suffragist Crush event uh, to help celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment and what that means uh, in and what it took to get there, as well as to recognize uh, where we've come and how much more we have to do. 
as the first Democratic woman elected to serve the state of Oklahoma in Congress, it is not lost on me in any way, shape, or form how important it is that we continue to come together and we lift up the voices of women in the boardroom, uh, in elected office, uh, and, and across our, our communities because we still have so much work to do. And as a fifth generation Oklahoman, I learned at an early age uh, from my mom, my parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents, that as Oklahomans, we show up for each other. But I am especially blessed and fortunate to have had examples of women in my life that showed me that just because something hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't do it. It's exactly what we did in 2018 when we pulled off the biggest upset of the entire cycle, when we showed them that Oklahomans are ready for a different kind of representation. And that's what we're going to show them again this year uh, when we win again for Oklahomans and for the, for the best interests of everyone in, in our communities. You know, as I was thinking about the centennial suffragist crush, I, I have so many women that that played a part in this movement that I look up to and am grateful for. The narrowing it down uh, is incredibly hard. Uh, but I think two uh, of the top suffragists that really impacted my life as I, I looked back and, uh, and have, have really thought about what it meant, the, the journey from uh, the journey from the very beginning uh, all the way through uh, ratification, that 70 year journey uh, that is really just a piece of the puzzle uh, and what it meant, the allies that had to come along, uh, but also the, the women's voices who were not, uh, who were not included uh, and the ongoing effort that, that extended past 1920 uh, when we still had work to do in the, the, the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act to ensure that, the, the, that black women and women of color were able to exercise their right to vote. The ongoing challenges to, to make sure that the Native women had the right to vote. That we have come so far, but we have so much to do because as Oklahomans, we're still, uh, we're still lacking in representation uh, in elected office for women. That's what drove me to work with Sally's List to uh, lift up opportunities for more women to run and, and serve because we know when that happens, we get better representation. So when I was thinking about my my centennial suffragist crush, uh, the two women that, that came to mind uh, from the suffrage movement uh, were Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Ida B. Wells. I learned about uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton uh, as, as a young girl, uh, as a part of the movement who, who seemed to uh, be able to do it all, uh, but knowing the sacrifices that she had to make, that taking care of her family and, and being uh, involved in, in a movement to ensure that women's voices could be heard uh, is, is no small feat. But I also, uh, and absolutely, uh, one of my biggest crushes is, uh, of course, uh, is Ida B. Wells. Uh, and and when I was in college, uh, I, I had this amazing class where I got to read uh, about uh, the autobiography, Ida B. Wells' biography, and began to study and learn more about her impact and her voice in the suffrage movement and how important it was. And we need to continue to lift that up and celebrate it. There are so many more voices. Uh, that it's almost um, it, it's it's almost hard to even think about the the breadth and the depth of women, the unsung voices and the the allies uh, that ensured that women had the right to vote. Uh, and then when I think about women uh, who have served in elected office and inspire me uh, as an Oklahoman, uh, one of the one of the things that really uh, one of the women that really continues to inspire me, uh, of course, uh, is Kate Bernard, who. Um, was elected to statewide office in 1907 is uh, the year that Oklahoma became a state uh, and before women had the right to vote uh, and of her effort throughout her lifetime, her commitment to, uh, to children uh, and, and to humane treatment of, of the incarcerated. Uh, and, and that is, that is a lesson that, that is so important that we can stand up for what's right, that we can, 
do things that are considered impossible if we do it together. Uh, and and I am so grateful for all of the support of, of so many women around me, those that taught me and raised me, uh, and, and those that continue to inspire me, and, and the work that we put in this uh, together. And that's why it is so important that we keep working hard as we move in closer to the 2020 elections. The, the consequences and the importance of this election have really uh, never been higher uh, because what we're looking at right now is protecting our, our democracy. That's why it's so important for us to work hard to make sure everybody's voice is heard and their vote is counted. That's why it's important for us to call our friends and our neighbors and make sure that they know that they can uh, request an absentee ballot, when and how to send it in, that, that we are doing everything in our power to turn people out to vote. Because that's how we change our communities. That's how we change our state. When we ask ourselves to make our voices heard and we lift each other up in the process, and that is exactly uh, what the Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women is about, supporting Democratic women uh, and, and people that are going to fight for things like expanding access to quality, affordable health care and making sure that our public schools are strong and creating jobs and economic opportunity across our communities that includes everyone. So I am grateful for all of your effort. I look forward to seeing many of you, hopefully when we can gather again and to the continued work we have to do uh, to increase opportunities for everyone uh, across our communities. And I hope you have a wonderful time uh, celebrating the uh, centennial of, of the 19th Amendment. Uh, let's celebrate, let's acknowledge how far we've come and then let's get to work. Thank you and uh, we hope to see you soon, bye. Thank you, Congresswoman Kendra. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, was a 19th century author and lecturer. Without a doubt, she was the chief philosopher of the women's rights and suffragist movements. Miss Stanton formulated the agenda for women's rights that guided the struggle well into the 20th century. Both she and her husband were active in the anti-slavery movement and worked alongside leading abolitionists of the day including the Grimkes and William Lloyd Garrison. An outstanding orator with a sharp mind, Stanton became one of the best known women's rights advocates in the country. Her speeches address such topics as maternity, child rearing, divorce law, married women's property rights, temperance, abolition, and presidential campaigns. A woman before her time indeed. Sadly, Elizabeth Cady Stanton died in 1902, 18 years prior to the ratification of the 19th Amendment. However, her keen intellect and dynamic oratory contributed significantly to its passage. She was the wind beneath the wings of numerous 19th century suffragists, and she continues to be a beacon lighting the path to full equality for countless 21st century women's rights advocates. Ida B. Wells Barnett challenged racial and sexual discrimination through the power of the pen. She was one of the many women who comprised the second generation of women suffragists and was one of many, many African-American women who worked tirelessly in the women's suffrage movement. In Chicago, she founded the Negro Fellowship League and involved herself in suffrage. She marched in several national suffrage parades, lectured, and founded the first black woman suffrage organization, the Alpha Suffrage Club of Chicago.
Wells Barnett used her gift of language to challenge discrimination and sexism throughout the United States, revealing injustices and fighting for equality and fairness. She is frequently quoted as saying that she was the only woman who traveled across country for political speaking engagements with a nursing baby. In 1907, prior to the 19th Amendment becoming the law of the land, Kate Bernard became the first woman elected as a state official in Oklahoma and the second woman to be elected to a statewide public office in the United States. She served as the first Oklahoma commission commissioner of charities and corrections for two four-year terms, the only position that the 1907 Oklahoma Constitution permitted a woman to hold. Before being elected to office, Bernard had worked as a teacher and in clerical patronage positions in the territorial government. Prior to Oklahoma statehood, Bernard was involved in aid and charity work and was the head of the union label organization in Oklahoma. She also participated in the farm labor meetings of 1906, which drafted the Shawnee demands that later formed the basis of the soon to be drafted Oklahoma State Constitution. Ms. Bernard was a key player in the enactment of compulsory education laws, state support of poor widows who were often dependent on their children's earnings, and statutes implementing the constitutional ban on child labor. She also was an advocate for working Oklahomans through the work she did in securing legislation aimed at eradic eradicating unsafe working conditions and the blacklisting of union members. She was one of the few public officials who dared to cry out against the abuse of Native American ch children and the inhumane treatment of prisoners which led to the construction of the Mount Callister State Prison. Bernard relied on her staring speeches to reach the public and convince the political powers of the need for increased federal protection for Native American citizens. These are just a few of the many reasons Ms. Bernard is known as Oklahoma's good angel. Wow, Congresswoman Horn has certainly selected three amazing women as her suffragist sheroes. Pioneer Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Crusader Ida B. Wells Barnett, and Oklahoma's good angel, Kate Bernard. Three determined ordinary women who did extraordinary things because their hearts were full of grace and their souls were generated by love. These three, like their sisters before them, including Susan B. Anthony, Sojourner Truth, and Lucretia Mott, stood their ground, raised their voices, and shook the very foundation of privilege. Many of today's foot soldiers are inspired by these great women. Thank you, Congresswoman Horn, for sharing these remarkable women with us today. Thank you for reminding us that we are, all have the capacity to rise above the ordinary of our everyday circumstance and excel as extraordinary servant leaders. Although the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920, this landmark event was neither the beginning nor the end of the story for women and their struggle for the right to vote.
Following the 1920 ratification of the 19th Amendment, suffragist extraordinaire Alice Paul said, quote, it is incredible to me that any woman should consider the fight for full equality won. It has just begun, end quote. Let us march on until full equality is the law of the land and justice rolls down like a mighty stream. Enjoy the rest of your day and be safe.